Hello friends, today we're going to be jumping right back into our Slime Fun tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at magical armor. But before we begin, I just want to thank all of you who have subscribed. Every time someone does, YouTube gives me notification about it and it just makes my day. So if you could please consider checking to see if you're subscribed, it would mean the world to me. It's completely free, it only takes two seconds, and if you want to unsubscribe later, it's totally okay. Thank you all so much for helping to change my life one sub at a time. Alright, so Slime Fun adds a variety of new armor types into two categories in our Slime Fun guide. Armor and Magical Armor. Today we're going to be focusing on Magical Armor. Each of these sets provide unique bonuses and abilities, each with their own best use scenario. They're all made in the Armored Forge shown in the video here. Our first set is our Ender set. This armor provides the same protection as leather armor, but by wearing the boots, the player becomes immune to ender pearl damage. This is especially useful when navigating tricky terrain, as you needn't worry about spamming pearls. In addition, wearing the full set allows you to use the magic eye of ender, found in our magical gadgets section here. This item acts as a single slot infinite source of ender pearls at the cost of wearing lower grade armor. In order to make a full set of Ender Armor, you will require these materials. As you can see, it's very cheap. And in order to make a Magic Eye of Ender, you require these. Our next set of armor is our Slime Armor. This set also provides the same protection as leather armor, however, both the leggings and boots provide special benefits. The leggings provide speed 3 as long as they are worn, and the boots give jump boost 6, allowing you to jump a bit over 6 blocks at a time and also make you completely immune to fall damage. However, there is no bonus to wearing the complete set, so it makes sense to only wear the leggings and the boots. These are all the materials required to make slime armor. As you can see, also very cheap. Our reinforced slime armor provides the same benefits as slime armor, except also have an armor rating equivalent to iron, and come crafted with Unbreaking 4 and Protection 2. Again, only the boots and leggings provide any special bonuses, and the total materials are only 21 slime balls and 32 steel ingots. Each steel requires an iron ingot, an iron dust, and a piece of carbon, so in total, this requires 32 iron dust, 32 iron ingots, and 4 stacks of coal for 32 steel. Our next set is our glowstone armor. Each of these pieces provide the same armor points as leather armor, but wearing any number of pieces will grant the player night vision. As a result, there's no reason to wear more than one piece of the set. The total materials required for a full set of glowstone armor are 24 glowstone. Our next armor set only includes boots. The farmer shoes provide the same armor rating as leather armor and prevent you from being able to trample crops while wearing them. Now, this isn't a problem that I personally run into a lot. Oh, but if some of you do, then these are the shoes for you. They are made with just four hay bales. Our next piece of armor is the Boots of the Stomper. These seemingly weak set of boots are actually potentially the strongest piece of armor in the game, not as a protection, but as a weapon. The Boots of the Stomper prevent you from taking any fall damage, but also deal that fall damage to any mobs or players nearby where you land. Fall damage is one of the only uncapped sources of damage in Minecraft, so being able to use this to our advantage is incredible. I'm going to go ahead and put on these Boots of the Stomper here, and let's spawn some friends. Now. Let's drop. Yeah, as you can see, it, it, it does quite a bit. Not only does it deal damage to nearby players and mobs, but it deals it as regular damage, not as fall damage. This means that mobs normally immune to fall damage, like iron golems, can be damaged and killed with this item. So if we go here, ooh, it's going to be a long fall. Oh, no. And they're all gone. In addition, damaged mobs are not aggroed onto you, as it's considered environmental damage. However, this does mean that the mobs will not be marked as player kills unless you hit them before killing them. So as you can see, we drop no basic circuit boards here. Also, since the Minecraft armor system is set up such that the greater the damage received is, the lower the percent of damage the armor mitigates, this single item can allow you to deal massive damage to both players and mobs with the very best armor. Here is a wither skeleton wearing full prot 4 netherite armor. And here come my leather boots. Yeah, if you didn't believe me, uh, I mean, obviously he wasn't wearing a head because wither skeletons wear wither skulls, but uh, he's, uh, he's dead. Now, crafting these incredible boots only requires two pistons and two pieces of yellow wool. Our next set of armor is our soulbound armor. Just like our soulbound weapons and tools featured in episodes 3 and 4, our soulbound armor can be upgraded in a smithing table to netherite and is not dropped on death. 
as we can see here. Oh. Oh, one more for good measure. And I'm still wearing my armor. It's rather expensive to make, requiring eight essence of the afterlife. If you don't know how to make that, you can watch the video here. Our penultimate armor set is our B set. The boots and chest piece have unique abilities, except the B set replaces the chest plate with an Elytra. This Elytra, however, activates slow falling whenever approaching the ground while flying. However, if you're going fast enough, you can still crash. The boots provide jump boost three, allowing you to jump a bit over three blocks and grant fall damage immunity. With this jump boost and the Elytra, you can actually fly or glide a little bit like a bee. See, it's like, it's like a bee. It's called the B set. All pieces except the Elytra grant the same armor rating as gold armor. And all pieces, including the Elytra, come enchanted with Unbreaking 4 and Protection 2. You can, of course, upgrade these enchantments in an auto enchanter. See, I, uh, I was going pretty fast. The total materials required to make B armor are 27 gold dust, 6 honey blocks, 8 honeycomb blocks, and 1 Elytra. Finally, our last piece of magical armor is our Elytra cap. This piece provides the same amount of armor as a leather cap, but, but prevents you from crashing while flying an Elytra. This is definitely an item geared towards heavy duty Elytra flyers who are finding themselves in extremely difficult and unpredictable terrain, especially looking towards 1.17, which will add all sorts of obstacles to navigate around and through in the cave update. Now we can see this in action here. If I just hit a wall real hard, Now we can try and see this and we can try to see this in action here if I just hit a wall real hard. Oh, so obviously for now, I don't really suggest making this item because uh, I don't know if this is the intended effect, um, but uh, it, it, it doesn't do what it says it, it wants to do. Um, I'm going to I'm going to really try here. OK, yeah. So I, 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 I can you can land safely. I mean, that, that was just that was just me landing safely. I mean, I'm, I'm not. Fine. I'm, I'm trying to die. I mean, like, that was just a little crash, and it, it, it's it's still. Yeah. Okay. So this this doesn't work. It, it just doesn't work. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Unsurprisingly, it's rather expensive to make, requiring three Elytra scales, five slime balls, and a leather cap. But the three Elytra scales are pretty expensive and are made in the ancient altar. However, uh, as you can see, it doesn't it doesn't work. It doesn't. It just don't make it. Don't do it. Now, if this is fixed in a later update, I'll make sure to note it in the description. So that's all of our magic armor sets. There is no objective best set as each one has its own specific uses. If you're wondering what kind of armor we can make for more defensive uses, then stay tuned as that's exactly what we'll be covering next time. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you found it helpful, please subscribe. It's free, it takes two seconds, and it helps me out a ton. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.